Hi everyone! I really didn't have any plans to go live today, but I had a, a client that I thought was at 12 o'clock and they're actually at 12.30, so I have a little bit of time and I thought what better way than to just come on here and hang out, <laughs> hangouts. <laughs> um, I don't do enough lives and I actually really enjoy them, so I thought I would head on over here and do that while I have some extra time. So it's kind of cool thinking you have a client and then you look and it's actually half hour later than you thought so I can hang out for a little bit. Um, I really don't have anything planned. I just wanted to come on here and chat and maybe just share a little bit with you guys about what's going on with me. I've been kind of like MIA the last week. My parents were visiting from Canada, which was super, super awesome. If anybody maybe hasn't been following along with my drama, I've been applying for a green card um, because I moved to the US um, and that process took a lot longer than I thought it was going to take and you're not actually allowed to leave the country. So I've been like corralled in the US, not allowed to leave for I guess about a year now, maybe a little bit longer. Um, so my poor parents have had to drive like eight hours to come and visit me. Um, so and they did which is like so sweet of them and of course I just had to spoil them like crazy with like so many different like take them all around Boston and take them to see all the things and feed them all the food and like I was just so grateful that they made such an effort so they've come to visit me last summer and then again this summer right before they got here my green card arrived in the mail which was like such an incredible Oh, just like turn of events and such a great thing to celebrate and so now I'm not trapped in this country anymore and I can actually go back to my home country and see my family and see my friends and do all the things so I'll be taking Brian um, to visit Canada for the first time in September so we're super excited about that anybody that knows anything about Canada knows that Canada's wonderland is like the epitome of rides and like super amazing I love theme parks and rides and being a big kid. So I'm definitely gonna be taking him there for something called Halloween Haunt, which is like a super scary version of the park where all the characters are dressed up all crazy and there's like haunted houses everywhere, but there's still the really big good rides. And I just wanna to say to anybody that loves rides, that is a place you wanna go. I've been now to like Disney World. We went for our honeymoon and the ride sucked. Like, yes, Disney World's amazing, especially Animal Kingdom. Oh my God, you get to see so many, like it's, it's magic. The environment is totally magic. They had a whole avatar world, which is my favorite, but the rides suck, like honestly. So I'm gonna like, I keep telling Brian, I'm gonna show you what real rides are like. Like just buckle up, it's gonna be so good. So I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, thank you everybody saying hi. Someone just said I look beautiful. Oh my God, thank you, that's so sweet. Um, okay, so that's what's going on with me. Parents were here for a week. Um, I, you know, entertaining them takes a lot of energy, of course, if you're having somebody stay in your home for like 24 seven, it takes a lot out of you. So I'm back and I thought I'd hop on this live and just say what's up with me. Got a lot of different little like things going on right now with Starseed Academy that you might be interested in. Um, right now I actually have a, a special, I never do specials, but I did it for my birthday. So my birthday was on the summer solstice because I'm a magical bish. And on June 21st, I started this birthday special, but it's actually going until the end of the month. So if anybody is interested in that, it's a super great deal. It's 88% off the Starseed Academy membership. So that means it's only $11 for your first month. So if you're interested in why did I choose, this is a little bit of a like behind the scenes. Why would I choose $11? I mean, I think everybody loves the number 11 as like angel numbers and all that, but it's actually a more personal number for me. My, so if anybody hears into numerology, my life path is an 11 and my destiny number, I think it's called, is also an 11. So I'm actually an 11, 11 soul, which is like the coolest friggin' thing. So of course I've got like a really soft spark, spot for that number. So that's why I made it $11 for the membership. And if you see me like pricing things with 11s, that's why. I love the number. It is my destiny path. It is my life path. It's one of those like very spiritual numbers in numerology. I think if you look up, and you should, oh my God, I have this book called Cosmic Code. It's really cool. Um, and it tells you all of your different numbers and what they mean and everything. Um, yes, hello, Tom. Um, and it tells you like what your number stands for. So I think 11 is like incredibly psychic, 
no surprise there. Um, but also like a spiritual leader. It says in there that it's like, you're very spiritual, you're very much a leader, you're very psychic, you're kind of like ushering in new eras. Yeah, new earth, right? So anyway, that's about me. Anybody else know what their numerology is? What's your life path? What's your destiny number? There's more than that. There's like a lot of different things. I am certainly not an expert in that, but I just think that kind of stuff is super cool. Um, so let me know if you know your own and that would be cool. Something else that's going on inside the membership is, I don't know if anybody knew this, but June is like a month, the energetic frequency. Like when I did my energy report for this month, um, if you're not on my free email list to get energy reports, what are you even doing? It's free. Make sure you get on my email list because I send energy reports every Monday. Um, but the, the energy report for June was that it was all about wealth right? Not abundance. Abundance is a softer word, like for people that are afraid to say money, like because they think it makes them a bad person. Like you're allowed to say the word money. You're allowed to love money. Money is like actually a super beautiful tool that you can use to make big changes in the world. Um, ooh, Craig is a life path three. That's so cool. Um, what does three mean? I have a whole book about it. I don't know what three means though, but I know like nine is closing stuff. One is fresh eight is about like learning about money and 11 is that spiritual one but it's cool to know and to like it's like I just love getting to know my soul so I love all these like natal charts you know numerology human design all that stuff is super cool to me um anyway so what was I just talking about so I was talking about don't remember. So I wanted to just like kind of share with you guys some of the stuff. Oh, that's what it was. What was going on in the membership this month? So, okay. So the, the energy of, of June is all about wealth. Okay. So don't be afraid to say things like wealth or money. You don't have to soften yourself by saying like, Ooh, abundance. Like it's okay. Uh, that's actually limiting belief and will keep money from you. It'll, it'll keep distant from you because you don't claim it as your own. Okay. So I'm teaching all that kind of stuff inside the membership this month. So it's all about wealth. So we did this like crazy wealth activation and it was very surprising that our ancestors are the ones that wanted to work with us on this. And it, it became very clear during that event that the reason was a lot of your money blocks and money like patterns, lack mentality patterns come from your ancestors, maybe very closely like your parents. Maybe you had parents that were like always talking about how hard it was to make ends meet. I remember, oh my God, I remember my dad saying all the time, you have to work like a dog to make ends meet. And he said that all the time to us. And what kind of a reality do you think that that created for him? He then works like a dog and just made ends meet. Like he worked, he worked his body to death. He was a mechanic and he blew out his shoulders and his hands were filled with arthritis. And like he, he had multiple heart attacks. He just was so stressed out and he literally his, it was like a prophecy. When you say words all the time like that, they become self-fulfilling prophecies. So think about like what your parents said about money and, and like, are you saying that? Like be very careful with your words and your choices around that. And so I'm teaching my members inside the membership to, so the best thing that you can do is actually to become best friends with money, right? So if like money were to enter into a party and it saw that you were there, it would come directly to you. Like, because you are, it's like you speak its language. You're so fun to hang out with. Like it would choose you. So think about if money was a friend, how do you treat it? When you get money, are you like, oh, I have to pay all these bills and super boring and no fun. Money doesn't want to come to that. Money wants to come to somebody that's like incredibly grateful, super playful, has fun with it, is lighthearted about it. Like when I'm moving money around like online, I let it be fun right? Like I let, oh, let's just put some here and put some there. And ooh, we're just moving it around. I just let it be fun and like really not serious. If you're serious about your money, it's like such a lack mentality and a limiting belief. So think about your relationship with that because it's probably very connected to what your parents said, right? So that's what I've been teaching my members about. We did this wealth activation this month and the ancestral chains that were present in people's bodies from poverty going back, you know, um, in their ancestry going back maybe generations there was a lot of poverty and it's stuff that's super important for you to deal with if you want to rise if you want to to make an impact here in the 3d world that we're in money is the tool that they use 
And it's a completely neutral, empty thing until you give it meaning. So it's not bad. It's not greedy. It's not negative. It's not corrupt. It's, a, it's empty. Just like technology is super empty. Like people are very concerned about like AI, right? Well, what is AI? It's, it's, it's also a tool that when you use it with a bad intention, okay, yeah, it can do some negative things, but it's the person behind it and it's the intention behind it. It can be a tool for great good if it was used properly. So don't be afraid of these tools that are available to us on earth, knowing that your intention will make them divine. It will make them beautiful. And I really, and I know that to be true. So, um, Craig saying, shift our belief about money from a negative to a positive. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just letting it not be this on a pedestal thing, like just letting it be, um, like, like I said, just your best friend, like silly, like you don't put it on a pedestal. It's not, it's not serious. It's not hard to get. It's like calling up a friend. Like, of course it's going to show up. Like we're, we're buds, we're best friends, right? Um, uh, oh, um, Tiffany, not special, but gifted, just said, I'm super excited for the July theme. Yes, because June was all about wealth. Now, June isn't over yet. I have one more event coming, if anybody's interested in joining, and it's going to be Sacred Money Mindset. So a lot about what we're talking about, but I'll be channeling from your guides. So I call in like whomever shows up, I call in all of your, your guides. I actually think I'm, I'm going to call in your higher selves for this one. It feels like the right vibe for that. Calling in your highest human self and asking them to enlighten us about what your money blocks are. And like, let's just talk about that. Let's work through it. Let's do that shadow work, that inner work to really get you cleared of these old patterns so that you can start building new belief structures. You hold a lot of these belief structures in your lower chakras. The chakras in your feet and your root chakra are, are like key for belief structures. So that's like a really good place to start if you're trying to do it on your own. Go and clear your feet. There's chakras in there. Um, and your root chakra is a big one for belief structures as well. Because the root chakra is formed between like zero to five years old. And that is when you are absorbing like a little sponge, everything that your parents are saying, and you're creating your belief structures. So you probably have belief structures like in your body that no longer align with you. And it's probably time to let them go, but you need to know that they're there in order to be able to do that. So, so I don't know what July's theme is gonna be yet. I've been really still into June. Wealth, I love it. Money is my friend. Money is beautiful. Money is the way that I help the world. You know, when I am the intention behind money, it becomes a divine force of good, right? So think about it like that. Um, and so some other things that we've been doing in the membership, I've been talking a little bit about like ancestral work. Like we've done a lot of that. I kind of went back and looked at the membership just out of curiosity to see like all of the, because there's like almost 200 events that we've done now and all of them are recorded by the way and they create this like really beautiful resource library and and like the all of these events you can do at any time so the ones that I've talked about the wealth activation it's not too late um you can absolutely like join and still do everything that I've talked about and especially make sure you join if you want to join if you've been thinking about joining do it before the end of the month just to get that super good $11 deal so we've done a lot of ancestral like clearing and healing inside the membership it's a lot bigger than people realize and some people it is there I've, I've actually like trained some people inside my course psychic light as I train people their gifts and their purpose really comes to light and I've actually seen people really step into being ancestral chain breakers like that's their purpose here I think it's a really divine purpose I think that if that's your gift, you'll probably really resonate with a lot of this. Like you just know you're like fascinated by culture, maybe your own culture, your own history, your own like the rituals and ceremonies in your 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 heritage, your ethnicity, all the things. People that are here to, to do ancestral work are very fascinated by humans and family and the dynamics between the two and the relationships. And it's really sacred work. Um, but we've also been doing in the membership a lot of angelic work. So I don't know how many people here know like a lot about the angels, but um, like there are quite a few different dimensions of angels. It's not just one or two like 
you've got the archangels kind of at the first level of the angelic realms and then above that you've got the um like the healer angels the cherubim angels the more like gentler divine feminine because the archangels are kind of that divine masculine warrior vibe and that doesn't mean that there's not females in there it just means that it has that protector divine protector vibe when you go above that, the next one is healers and the cherubim and like that purity and that innocence. And then when you go above that, I it's um, seraphim, the seraphim angels, which are the closest being to gods, like the closest being to like godlike beings, even higher than an oversoul. Um, uh, you know what? I just said that and I feel like that might not be true. I feel like oversouls are really, really high up as well. So um, but but right around there, like super, super high vibe. And in the in the membership, we've actually worked with all of these different angelic realms. So if you're into angels, if you're into seraphim and, and the archangels like Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, um, or if you just know that you have like roots in the angelic realms, there's a lot in there for you. I think that people look at, you know, the name of my business, Starseed Academy, and they think it's all just galactic. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I, there's a lot of galactic stuff that I do because it's who I am. Like, I was, um, I, I've been coined a couple of things. The galactic priestess, like a long time ago, maybe 12, 13 years ago, by someone that did a reading for me and saw that I had clairaudient um like hardwired telephone lines to the gfl um headquarters to the to the mothership basically like so i had four i had four markings in my birth chart for claire audience telephone lines to the gfl so they were like oh well you're very much a galactic priestess you're kind of like a shepherdess here to to help other star seeds through their awakening and through unplugging from the simulation or the matrix that's exactly what i do so it's so funny that somebody predicted that so long ago but it's not all that star seed academy is and that's why i just like wanted to share like we we're doing so much ancestral work we're doing so much work with the angels i love 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 angels so much i love working with ascended masters and angels and like those higher realms really feel like home to me um, but then inside the membership too, we've been doing a lot of ancient civilizations. Last month's theme was actually all about ancient civilizations. So I don't know if you feel like really connected to maybe Egypt or Atlantis or Lemuria or, um, like the, the Mayans, like there's so many ancient civilizations that are very high vibrational, very, very spiritual. So we've actually done a lot of work with like our past lives in ancient Egypt. And we've also journeyed to ancient Egypt. How do you journey to ancient Egypt? Well, astral travel, right? Astral travel is this really cool thing that's very misunderstood, you guys. It's like, it's not this difficult thing to do like people make it seem like oh there's like take 11 steps before no there's not a bunch of steps to do it it's just that the more that you do it the more clear it becomes so i actually have a training inside the membership for um an astral travel like introductory guides to just get people started because we do it so much in there and i can tell you some of those secrets if you're interested so astral travel when you first start it feels like you're just listening to a guided meditation. So say you join my membership and we're going on this astral journey to ancient Egypt, okay? Which means we're going beyond time and space. We're going to another timeline. We're leaving our bodies behind and we're traveling just as the light body or the soul consciousness. Um, what that would feel like if you've never done it before, it would just feel like you were listening to me doing a guided meditation. It's live, like on Zoom, but you would have your eyes closed and you'd just be listening to me narrate it. So it would feel like a guided meditation and you know what that feels like. Probably most people here have tried a guided meditation and it feels kind of like, you know, you get some visuals. If you're a visual person, you can kind of picture some of it and you're just very relaxed and you're just kind of listening to a story, right? If you keep doing it, as in if you keep practicing astral travel with me, there's another level all of a sudden it doesn't feel like a guided meditation anymore. It actually starts to feel like what they call, um, oh, what's the word, one second. Oh, what is the word? It's like you you become the observer of something. Um, oh my gosh, I can't believe I can't think of it. Okay, it'll come to me as I'm talking. This The second level beyond a guided meditation is where you become the observer of it all. Like you become the observer of the experience from kind of like 
above. Why can't I think of this word? Does anybody know what I'm trying to say right now? Um, it's where people like remote viewing. Oh my God, that's what it is. Okay. So the second level of astral travel goes beyond the guided meditation and it becomes remote viewing. So if you've ever heard of remote viewing, it's where you're actually able to view other worlds without leaving your, like without your body going anywhere, you travel as the consciousness and the awareness and you become the observer. So if you continue to practice with me astral travel, which we do all the time in the membership, the second level is you start to feel like this remote viewer. What does that mean? It means a lot more details. A lot more details start to come through and they're very surprising to you. So it's got this like level of spontaneous uh, energy that you know you're not creating it, right? So like the first level is this guided meditation. You're like, oh yeah, I'm just picturing what she's saying. Then you step into your remote viewer self. You step into this new skill as the remote viewer and you start to observe everything around you and it's surprising. You're like, oh, oh, that's here. Or, oh, this person is here. Oh, that, oh my goodness. And what starts to happen, and people say this, like, like literally almost everybody says this to me, is they will hear me describe something right after they see it. So say I say to them, okay, we're, we're walking through, we went, we've been to a lot of places. We've been to Venusia. So like Venus, Venusian society, Andromeda, where they have light spires. We've been to inner earth. We've been to work with the mantis beings at the GFL. We've been to a unicorn kingdom. We've been to Lyra. We've been to Lemuria. Oh my God. One of my favorites. We've been to ancient Egypt. We've been so many places. We've been to the Pleiades. Um, we've worked with the Pleiadians a lot, actually. And people will say to me after they've done a couple of astral travels, even just two or three, they start to say to me, um, oh my God, I saw that before you said it. I saw that being, I saw that color. I saw that plant you described before you said it. How is that possible? And they're always so surprised. And I'm like, cause it's real. Like, cause astral travel is actually a real thing that's happening. It's just very, very shocking to people when it gets proven to them that it's real. So that's the first two levels. So at first it feels like a guided meditation. Then it feels like remote viewing and it's spontaneous. And you start to see things before I say them. And you're like, holy shit, I'm really doing this. Oh my God. It's like the coolest thing. There's a third level. The third level, third level is when you're fully astral traveling. And that is the level where you're actually really in it. So you can interact with other beings. So you'll have them come up to you and they'll, you know, speak to you or, or give you healings or activations. Um, they will like interact with you. You'll be able to interact with the beings. You're able to interact with the environment. And you also start to get sensations, which is really weird when you're in your light body. So say like a breeze like takes your hair and you feel it your light body sends that sensory trigger to your human physical form, which is waiting back at home. It's not on the astral journey with you, but your body sitting in this chair maybe feels the breeze. So you're feeling it in two places and it's really, really amazing when you get like strong at your astral traveling. You're able to see clairvoyantly, hear clairaudiently and feel, that's clairsentience, clear feeling, feel a breeze, touch a leaf, and you get the feeling in your human fingers, even though it's your light body doing it. It's just the coolest thing, you guys. I actually just don't think that astral journeying or astral traveling is understood really at all. And I really love to do it. So it's definitely something that I do with a lot of intention and purpose. You know, we don't just go places for no reason. We're often going to um, meet meet someone, you know, go and meet a high priestess from Lemuria or go and meet the, the Mantis Council of Peacekeepers. And, and they often, no, not often, every time they have something for us. There's a reason I get nudges to visit these places with my group. So they'll have like an activation for you or they'll have a healing or they'll have information or they'll have something that you come back different. I actually think you come back different every time we do the astral journeys together. You come back more. You come back with more. It's so, so cool. Um, so that's a lot of the stuff that's going on in the membership. So the the next uh, event, like I said, it's going to be all about wealth and it's called Sacred Money Mindset. And I'm going to be channeling people's higher selves and we're going to be finding out like what your blocks are, what's stopping you from kind of breaking through to your next level of wealth and freedom and have all the things that come with that, you know, being of service, making an impact, a beautiful, positive impact in this world. There's so much waiting for you and, and you're almost blocking yourself. We've talked a little bit about what those blocks could be like ancestral patterns and stuff. 
but there's more, there's other limiting beliefs, there's experiences that you've had that you've forgotten about. Like, you know, you've probably had an experience as like maybe five years old, seven years old, maybe in, in public school, like grade two, three, four, something like that. And then maybe even as a teenager, like you've had experiences that have created blocks in you around this, you know, shame, embarrassment, those are really heavy, negative, low, low, low frequency. Shame is actually the lowest frequency on the scale. If you were measuring all things, like all emotions, shame is at the very bottom. So if you're feeling shame around anything to do with struggling as a kid, not having the cool shoes, not having the brand names, like I grew up quite in like, like we grew up quite poor. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Like, you know, we we didn't have a lot of food. We did, certainly didn't have, I had all hand-me-down clothes like my whole life basically, um, unless we did like a little bit of back to school, like, you know, a hundred dollars for back to school shopping, get one or two things. But most of the time it was all hand-me-downs and that does create embarrassment because kids are so cruel and so judgmental. So it creates a lot of shame and stuff like that. So you might have all these different kinds of blocks that you don't even know about that are in there. So I'm really looking forward to getting deep with people about this. Um, this event is happening June 29th. And so um, if you're wanting to join in, then um, join before that date if you want to do it live with me. And another, like I said at the beginning of this, another really powerful reason to join before June 30th is that there's this amazing um, birthday special that I'm doing right now anyway. So it's only $11 for your first month. Okay, so anyway, other than that, things are going really good. It was so nice to see my parents, but it's also really nice to have my home back, right? Of course. Um, and I've got a couple of other really big programs still happening right now. So CEO of Light has now been switched over to waitlist. Okay, so the people that are on the waitlist, please don't worry. You know, like three months goes by so fast. We're already three weeks in actually to CEO of Light. So there's very like, it, it's going to fly by. And then I'll be looking for the next group anyway. I think I've already got like um, a couple of people that are for sure and a couple of people thinking about it. So if you are wanting to get first dibs because I limit my spaces so, so much in these programs, then make sure you're on the wait list. Of course, just link in bio for that. So I actually wrote the lesson plan. I have CEO of Light on Tuesday, so I have it later today. And I wrote the lesson plan last, last night and it is all about sacred branding in your business, why it's important, what branding is, and then how it can be sacred and divine. And then we're also going to be talking about activating content. You know, like what kinds of content should you be making? What kinds of content convert? What kinds of content call in your soulmate clients and like your, your soul family? Like what should you be talking about? What kind, like what formats should you be using? What platforms like all the things to do with content and branding are coming up in CEO of Light because CEO of Light is all about spiritual business, spiritual strategy, and it can go together, right? Like I'm not into the push hustle culture, push mentality, toxic masculine hustle culture. It's not about that. It's it's really beautiful. It's exactly what I've used to grow my own business um, from just like a, a whiff of an idea. Like my business started as like an idea. I remember standing in the bathroom and I was doing my hair, looking in the mirror, and I was thinking about how I keep feeling the nudge like I'm supposed to be on YouTube. Like, I just know that's where I'm supposed to be. This is like 2018, and I'm like, I know I'm supposed to be on YouTube, and I'm so afraid. I feel like I, I don't know what people, how people will take me. This was, okay, this was before start being a starseed was cute. I was like before the trend. If if you can call it a trend now, it's it's at least definitely well known, like a lot more well known than then. So I'm on, on like this huge public platform <laughs> talking about starseeds and people thought it was crazy and they definitely said so. And there was a lot of pushback at that time. Um, and it's just like so funny to think about now how, terrified I was to do my first YouTube video. But it's so important to listen to your soul nudges because it became so much. That shaky, like my hands were shaking in my first YouTube video. I was so afraid what people were gonna say. And they were super like, you know, judgmental, not getting the whole vibe, not knowing what a star seed was. It was too early for like I was be before my time, I guess. And my first video was called Welcome to Earth, which you can just imagine. Oh my God, imagine seeing some girl on YouTube like, Welcome to Earth, Starseeds. Like, it, it's hilarious. 
And it's so funny because like, I honestly, I can just only call these videos cringy at this point, but I refuse to go and delete them because it shows so much growth and it shows authenticity and it shows like how spirited I was to make this a dream come true. And I also think that you shouldn't delete your old um, content. You shouldn't delete your old Instagram posts. You shouldn't delete your old YouTube videos. You shouldn't delete your old podcasts. I know you want to be all fresh and rebranded, but there's somebody at that level still. Like that's still for someone. And it's kind of really beautiful for people to be able to follow the whole journey. So I know pre it shows a progress. Exactly, exactly. So I know that people... Um, go maybe go digging you know how you like when you really like someone and you've binged all their current videos i know people go digging into my old stuff and i of, i often wonder what they think if they're just laughing or cringing or what it is that they're doing um so i mean full permission for you to go and do that if you want to it's pretty funny um but anyway just like that's how it started like star seed academy was just this whiff of an idea and i started by saying I was, so the, the way that it came to me was I was standing in 2018, I was standing in the bathroom doing my hair, looking in the mirror. And I was like, I'm meant to be on YouTube and I know it. I just know it. And I, and I don't know how to do it. And I'm so afraid. And I don't know what do I call myself? And so, so clearly in my left ear, something said Starseed Academy. And I went, what? Oh, I just got chills when I said it. Oh my God, it's still there, whatever. And it's like, was that my highest self? Like at the time, I don't know who it was, but I just heard so clearly Starseed Academy. If I didn't listen to that, you guys, my life would not, my life would have changed. I started a YouTube video like full cringe mode and, and terrified and hands shaking and, and, and I did it anyway. And I was so consistent, you guys. I showed up Monday, Wednesday, no, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday. That was my days. Sunday, Monday, Wednesday. Sunday, Monday, Wednesday. Three videos a week. Do you know how much work that is? Do you know how much editing that is when you're a nervous wreck and every other word is um? <laughs> like I had to edit out like half the video. It was so much work. I didn't know how to, I had to learn how to vid edit videos, like a video editor. I had to learn how to create thumbnail images. I had to learn everything from scratch. It took me a really long time, but I just kept going and I just kept, I, if I promised my audience, I had an audience of like four people, but it didn't matter. If you treat it like millions are watching, millions are watching me and adore, then millions eventually will be watching you and adore you. And so you really have to just act as if you are the version of in this version of your business or in the version of yourself that you really truly want to call in and so that's what I did and I just kept showing up and showing up and showing up and I was stuck at like like a like under a thousand followers forever it felt like like forever and then all of a sudden you've got some kind of momentum under you and it's it just takes off right it's um it's like compound energy it compounds on itself and then here I am today now with like a proper website, like an assistant, um, still YouTube channel going strong. I can't do three videos a week anymore because holy hell, that's too much when you have a, a thriving business, but I do every Sunday. And oh my gosh, my YouTube, like YouTube is still my favorite platform. So I give a lot over there. So if you're not following my YouTube channel, my last video was insane. Um, it was really good. It's actually like already being censored by YouTube. That's how good it was. You know, it's good when you're getting the warnings. Um, and I'm definitely getting those warnings on that video, but I'm leaving it up for now. We'll see what happens. So definitely go check it out before it's like forcibly taken down. Um, but that's what it started as is just this crazy YouTube channel and like this, this girl that was so determined to find her community. I felt so alone. No one spoke my language. I was literally so alone in my life. There was no other star seeds, no other awakening souls. Like I didn't have anybody to talk to. So I talked to my camera and it's literally just a crazy girl talking to her camera. And, and that turned into like um, this unbelievable opportunity for me to reach people, to build a community of over 5,000 now on Instagram and growing steadily, to have a membership community that I love and put so much into, to have two signature programs, Psychic Light, where you discover and then master your gifts, and CEO of Light, where you then take those gifts and build a business or take a business that's not doing what you want it to, like not thriving and kind of repivot into the spiritual business. Um, I'm just so grateful, like, you know, like those opportunities, not only the impact, but the freedom that it's given me. I was able to totally unplug from the nine to five and support myself. 
beautifully, like abundantly and, and take care of other people like my family as well. So, you know, like you have nudges for a reason that all started from a nudge in the mirror of like, you're supposed to be on YouTube and then something saying Starseed Academy. You get stuff. I know you guys get stuff like that all the time, but we write it down in our notebooks and then we close them up or we write it on a note in our phone and then we forget it's there. Maybe it's time for you to go digging through your old notes and see what's been trying to call you. What soul nudge is your first step to your own freedom and abundance and great, great impact that you could be making here in this world, this is the time. Like literally, if you're not gonna do it now, when are you gonna do it? Cause it's 2023 and the world is crumbling around you and people are waking up and they're afraid and they don't know what's going on and they feel like they're losing their whole world when they realize it's all a simulation and it's all corrupt and it's all pretty much fake. It's terrifying and they need you. They need you to, They need. we need all the healers. We need all of the, um, all of the healers, all of the activators, all of the writers, all of the coaches, we need everybody on board. Um, and it's just really important that you don't ignore that because it's literally the reason that you came to earth. So like, feel that out. You're being called. I know that you're being called, soul called, you know? So really think about that a little bit more deeply this year. And just to let you know, like a little prediction for you, I've been seeing the year 2024 for since 2020. So as soon as 2020 started, I kept seeing 2024, like the number 2024. And every time I tune into that, something big is going to be happening. We have a couple of things on April 8th of 2024. It's the Great North American Eclipse. I really recommend you research that. The amount of energy and the frequency that's going to blast the planet at that time is going to be insane. We have an election year in the U.S., um, which is always like, creates huge waves in the world. And, and there's something else big that's going to be happening. It feels like an implosion, you know, where like things implode on themselves. And I really believe that it's going to be the um, epicenter or what's the word like the, the height, the crescent of this whole crumbling phase because Gaia is in her crumble she's in her purge before we can rebuild the new earth we have to kind of like lay flat the the corrupt systems that have gotten us where we're at so and that's kind of everything like a lot of government health care all the all the systems basically and 2024 feels like a really big pivotal moment for that. So if you're feeling like you're being nudged really hard right now that's because you've got six months to prepare. Like, think about that. It's only six months away. I've been waiting for this for so long and I can't believe it's only six months away. And I've been trying to prepare myself and my business to take on as many people as I can and hold more, hold more all the time to help as many people as I can. So how are you contributing? Because you are here to be of service during this time. So if you're not sure where to start, please reach out to me. I've got a lot of different ways that I can help you. Um, I actually have a free masterclass if you want to get started with something that's easy and you don't have to. Sometimes people are nervous about reaching out. Then just head to the link in my bio and grab my free masterclass. It's um, Starseed Success Keys. How to be successful in your earth mission. That's probably actually a really good place to start considering what we're talking about. So just go do that, okay? Go and watch it. If it really hits home, if it really resonates, then it's probably time for you to do take the next step. Right. And that could be, you know, working with me or it could be working with somebody else that resonates with you. But whatever it is, take the step. We need everybody like activated and online and ready to go. Oh, I love that, Craig. Truth is prevailing. All is shifting. Yes. And somebody else saying people say there's going to be a war. Something's coming big in 2024. Uh, nobody can say for sure. You can get the feeling that it's coming. It feels like an implosion to me, not an explosion. Um, and it does it definitely feels related to corruption and coming to light. It's going to be another big thing. And, um, you know, there's too many timelines for people to say this is exactly what's going to happen because we make one choice different and we're on a different timeline. There's a lot of timelines, but you can certainly feel that whatever it is is 2024 it's going to be big so anyway i'm going to leave it at that i've got my client like i said at 12 30 so i thought i'd hop on here because i had some time and i really just hope that everyone is feeling inspired and you know like they're ready to kind of step into their mission their purpose 
maybe going back through your old notes, journals, or just meditating and asking what is the soul nudge that is showing itself to you. It's probably on repeat until you do something about it. So what's your soul nudge right now? Because mine was, I'm supposed to be on YouTube. That's all I knew. And I just made that happen and I just figured it out as I went along. So what's your thing? Like, what's your nudge? Figure it out, you guys. You've got six months. That's lots of time. Oh my God, you can you can collapse time and space and do so much in six months. I know that you can. So 11-11 um, on the clock. Cool, it's 12-11 here. Awesome. Okay. Anyway, go enjoy your day. I'll talk to y'all soon. Thanks for hanging out. Bye, everybody.